Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. One of the joys of, uh, of uh, growing up baby snakes is uh, getting them feeding and it's particularly difficult when the little snake uh, will certainly at this size put you in the hospital if not kill you. Uh, this is an Echis oscillatus baby that was hatched out. Um, just so you can get a size comparison, that is uh, the length of my fingernail approximately. And that is uh, uh, the size of the character that I have to pin, restrain, and then I'll cannulate. Uh, with this infant feeding tube, and Lori will give it a an amount that we agreed upon, and we'll pull the tube out and drop the happy camper back in its bin. Um, as you can see, it's already saw scaling, which is uh, its characteristic defense posture. That's why they're called saw scale vipers. They inflate their their scales and believe me this this is quite large compared to what I started off with uh, I've uh, I've been feeding them now since they were hatched this way well, at least once a week uh, I would say that snake is probably double in length yes. you agree yes. and I believe that this is a male <clears throat> it was a little tiny tiny weenie you could roll it up and it would fit on top of, you know, like a, I don't know, a dime? Yes. And this, this happens to be a little boy. Um, I can tell because I am what is known as an expert. There's plenty of people out there that can't tell. And what they do is they pop the hem, try to pop the hemipenis out, uh, causing the, pain, uh, the snake some discomfort and perhaps permanently injuring it. And... The fact that this is a venomous snake makes it uh, even trickier. Uh, but this is a little boy. You can tell by the size and shape of his tail. And as you can see, he's very happy to see me again. So now is the tricky part. And that's restraining him as gently as I can. Um, so I can grab him by his little... Uh, pointy end there and this is a process which you know I don't rush I wait until uh, I perceive the moment to be correct because the snake will not uh, uh, not be happy about it and you might even see me bail out if I think things aren't uh, just uh, perfect uh, first of all, I would much prefer that the snake was pointing in the other direction, but again, this is a wild animal, and it will, uh, it will go off in the direction that it desires. Now, some people like to use, you know, big tools like snake hooks to, to pin. I would much rather uh, use something a little bit more precise, especially on a snake uh, this size. Uh, so I use this pair of forceps or even a slightly lar larger pair. I see your little lips moving. Oh, you bit yourself. Better that than me. And they're just very difficult to pick up because they're so tiny. And here's the little blighter up close and personal. You can see the size that I'm working with here. And yes, they always poo on me while I'm doing this. So, uh, it's a little tough to see, but I will cannulate the little guy, which
which will make him even happier. Oh, death roll. Okay, so... Now, this is graduated. Get your tongue back where it belongs. This is graduated in centimeters, and I'll go down about eight centimeters. And now Lori will go ahead and uh, uh, give it eight tenths of a cc of uh, Gerber's chicken baby food with some extra ingredients. Okay, that's good. And we'll sort of milk it down, and we got a nice fat little tummy. Pick up the box and drop the little blighter so he can't bite you uh, on the release. Now that was so enjoyable, we're going to do it again <laughs> twice. So this is another one. Three of the five eggs hatched. Uh, they were sort of eating gecko tails, but they weren't really putting on a whole lot of weight. So it was nice that they were eating on their own. However, um, I made the decision that we should probably just go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, power feed them uh, by cannula this way. We have uh, a known amount of food going in, and it's balanced and uh, uh, controlled. Now, what flavor might be you, huh? A little tough to tell, I think. That might also be a boy. Come on. Come on. Again, these have more than doubled in length. Stay there. Now these are my old uh, trusty uh, hemostats. I've had these since high school, if you can imagine. These are more than 50 year old tools that I have here. Um, again, this has uh, got a nice rounded end, which is very useful for pinning smaller snakes and trying not to hurt them. Hello. Say hello to the camera. There we are, another little happy camper. Okay, so we use Pam Kitchen Spray um, just to lubricate the cannula. Um, just so it slides down their gullet uh, a little smoothly. Okay, so Lori, you can go ahead and uh, uh, push it in and and probably another male. So point eight. And keep going. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And now we'll pull this out. Oh, another fat tummy. And we'll drop them in the box and wipe the poo off my hands. And they'll be set for another week. They get the very nice... Uh, I'm kneeling. Oh. Well, hello, dude. I see you shed a little bit, but you've got some stuck shedding. We've got at least the head plates off. Um, so we will we'll go ahead and uh, give this guy uh, a shot at some food, huh? <laughs> oh, you guys. Huh? Come on. No, uh, no taking off and uh, playing floor hockey, huh? huh? Oh, yes, we don't like that, huh? We don't like that. Oh, I'm really sorry I have to be mean. Sorry, I have to be mean. As you see, we never push a bad position. 
you wait? Oh, a little snappy blighter, huh? I know you see me now. You know where the attack is coming. All right. All right, all right, calm down. Oh, look at that little fang. All right, well, he's going to need a little bit of, uh, of a wet down. Maybe some internal hydration will do the trick. Careful not to put my fingers right on his snoot. Pooping snoots is not allowed with these guys because... <laughs> Because you're liable to uh, end up going to the hospital if you do. Okay, that's good. So there we go. We got a full tummy. Uh, this one is a girl. I'm pretty certain of that. There you go. All right, so we're going to put them back in the rack and let them uh, digest their food and move on to our next project. Remember, I have to do this... Uh, uh, three little venomous snakes at least uh, once a week. Uh, um, you know, you never get used to doing it. Um, each time is always a serious amount of risk involved. Well, now it's time to clean the squamies. I will uh, I'll pull the four remaining uh, squams out. Come on. Be a good snake. They, um, they're, unfortunately with any of the, the snakes, uh, there is some attrition during the growing, uh, period. Uh, this is one that is just over a year old, was born in May of this year. Um, there were four... <laughs> Uh, we did have uh, uh, quite a few, uh, but this uh, is is one of two from that particular litter that's left, and then we have two that are from uh, that are just about seven or eight months old now. And as you can see, it's very tense because I dragged it out of its, uh, its habitat and it's not necessarily happy. You know, I called this a female, but I am not so certain that it's a female. It could be. It's a very long tail. Um, for a female, but it is a boreal and we're not going to mess with it, so <laughs> as it strikes at the camera. <laughs> Go back in your hut. Come on, I'm sorry to disturb you, but this is, this is the way things are. Huh? You need your cage cleaned, and we're going to do that whether you like it or not. So, I question that snake's sexuality, and yes, I did... Uh, assume it's sex. Um, this one I claim is a boy. Oops, I'm sorry. And as you can see, it's, it's quite friendly, waiting for the moment to bite me. Now, these, these I call arboreal echis. That's probably why I like them so much. Um, they actually have a common ancestor with Echis. Um, several, well, not several, probably 20 or 30 million years ago. And their venom composition is quite similar. They cause the same sort of problem in humans if you get tagged, and that's a consumptive coagulopathy. Uh, Echis antivenin does seem to work pretty well. Uh, we have no real direct 
clinical evidence uh, that this is the case. Uh, however, if you give somebody Echis antivenin that has a bite by one of these, they recover faster than you don't. So I'm going to put it back in its bin and perhaps it will uh, not be so uh, uh, cranky then. Okay, so that's the May of 2018's. Now we're going to do the November of 2018 brood. You know, that's not so bad. Um, we're just going to give this, this gal some water and let it go at that. Uh, it's not, not nasty, there's no flies. This one I sort of call ghost because it has sort of a ghost-like uh, appearance. Um, it's gotten darker as it's gotten older. Yes. It was a very pale, almost gray when it was little. Yes. And the reason why they're called variable bush vipers is because their colorations can vary. Um, they, the color they start off with is probably not the color they're going to end up with. Um, so if you very carefully go around and hand me the water uh, jug, uh, I will uh, put a splash of water in its water dish and we'll put this uh, young lady uh, back on the, uh, the rack. I have to be very careful because they do have a long reach and I am using my fingers to move the tub. Well, here's a sibling of the one you just saw. A nice tiger pattern. Um, Again, I don't think we're going to really disturb this since this has water in it. We will clean the water dish a little bit uh, to clean out any sort of bugs. This one is not the best feeder. Uh, it's very reluctant. Um, but if you tease it, it will, uh, it will consume the mouse uh, like you know, earlier today, uh, a few hours ago, I gave it a mouse. Um, and these are the last two uh, squamies uh, from the November of 2018 litter. I've got some 2016 boys, so any of the, any of the gals uh, from these breed, broods, I can easily uh, well, not easily. Uh, I don't do any of the work. All I have to do is put them together. Um, uh, I can safely breed them because they're unrelated and we're not creating uh, incest here. So I'm going to move that snake back into the rack and leave it alone because uh, snakes Venomous snakes in particular don't like to be bothered. 